Hey, what's up? Ron here. Welcome to Time Walk TV. I hope you're all having a great day today. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, we post videos about Magic the Gathering, primarily longer form gameplay videos on Magic Arena. So if that's something that interests you, go ahead and consider subscribing. And if you like shorter gameplay videos, go ahead and check out my Instagram, my IGTV, where we post single match gameplay videos on a bunch of different decks. So if you want a quick, easy way to watch some games, go ahead and check out my Instagram. And you can follow me on Twitter if you want to talk about magic or anything else that you're interested in. Go ahead and follow me there. So today we're going to be taking a look at a really cool, interesting, uh, kind of a weird deck actually. Andre Strotsky, the Mythic Championship winner, has been brewing and doing some crazy stuff like he normally does. This deck, I didn't really know how it wins or how it, what it did really, and you know, just diving a little deeper into it, well, it's actually pretty crazy and it's super powerful. It's a Simic Adventure deck. It leverages the power of the Innkeeper with Merfolk's Seeker Keeper, and it also has Emery and Vandris Gargoyle and all these crazy cards that you wouldn't really think would all mash together into one big deck, but it works actually. It's pretty wild because it can fight on so many different levels by either a beatdown plan or you can go the card advantage route with the innkeeper or you can even mill yourself or mill your opponent with the Jace Wielder of Mysteries. So it's pretty wild. So let's go ahead and jump into Arena here and take a look at the deck. All right, welcome into Arena. Let's go and take a look at this crazy Simic Adventure deck and see what it's all about here. So first off, let's take a look at the main card in our one drop slot. Edgewall Innkeeper. Now I've tried the green black adventure deck a few times and this card is completely bananas. I love drawing cards as a blue mage so I love that this is just drawing tons of cards for us. So A plus on this card, 100% great. Now moving into our adventure cards, we have Merfolk Secret Keeper. Now it looks a little ominous because it's a 0-4, just mills for 4, who cares? Well, we'll get into that a little bit later. But with Edgewall Innkeeper into play, well, we have Merfolk Secret Keeper to draw a card for one mana. Uh, Gilded Goose makes a food token, which is an artifact, which we'll get into a little bit later because this deck has multiple layers. It's like an onion. You just keep cutting back the layers and everyone starts crying and it's just, it's just you know, a terrible reference, but I know. <laughs> uh, we have Vantra's Gargoyle. I know. Stay with me. Stay with me. Vantra's Gargoyle. Two mana, five, four flyer. We can mill ourselves for four or mill our opponents for four. So there's a little synergy there. Disdainful Stroke, just a little uh, catch-all for these bigger mana decks that are running around. Like a lot of these green decks have a lot of big spells like Nyssa. Um, Golden Egg, well, it's a food, so you can sacrifice the food, gain some life. It helps with your mana a little bit. And, you know, it helps with Emery, Lurker Luck. And you're probably thinking, hmm, why is Emery in this deck when there's only two golden eggs. Well, Vandra's Gargoyle is also an artifact. So with Emery, whenever one of these dies, well, you can just tap Emery and cast this from your graveyard, which is super bananas. Also, if you mill over a Great Henge, this is also an artifact, which you can cast from your graveyard with Emery. So that's kind of sweet. On top of that, Emery mills us for four, which helps our Jace Wielder of Mysteries plan of milling ourselves out Plusing Jays and then winning the game. I know there's a lot to uh, you know digest with this because I'm kind of bouncing all over the place, but I have to kind of figure out what's going on with you. So um, going back to the Edgewall Innkeeper, we have Adventure Creatures here and the one drop slot with Merfolk Secret Keeper. We also have Brazen Borrower, which is a great tempo card. So with Petty Theft, you bounce whatever you want, and then you can cast this for three mana as a three one flash flyer, which can also draw you a card from the Innkeeper. And the great, great 5-5 five, five Big Beast Noble that is Lovestruck Beast makes a 1-1. One, one. Then it for 3 mana, you make a 5-5. Five, five. So really sweet card. Also draws a card from Innkeeper. So, you know, we're getting our card advantage engine going here a little bit. Um, we also have one Gadwick, which is super sweet because it draws a ton of cards when you flood out. And with our blue spells, we can tap down our opponent's stuff to kind of swing in with the Gargoyles or you know, stop them from attacking is more of a tempo play. That's really cool. Uh, we have two Jace Wielder Mysteries. This is for the mill plan. Uh, we have Tamio to get anything back out of our graveyard once we mill it with either Emery or with Gargoyle or with Merfolk Seeker Keeper. Uh, this also puts cards in our yard as well so we can get through our deck a lot faster. The Great Henge, 
Um, you can cast this on turn four if you go Gargoyle on two, which is hilarious, by the way. But uh, the Great Hens, you're going to gain some life. You're going to put token or counters on the creatures that come into play. So when you cast the Vantress Gargoyle from your graveyard, well, it gets a 1-1 counter, turns into a 6-5 flyer, which is crazy. Lovestruck Beast turns into a 6-6. Six -six. Absolutely nuts. Moving on to the lands, we have four of the Scry lands, four of the Shock lands, six of each basic two Castle Vantress and two Fable Passage. So Castle Vantress, really awesome. Scry 2, Fable Passage get, gets whatever you need. And then the rest is kind of, uh, you know, run-of-the-mill stuff. Moving over to the sideboard, really funny because it's got four Shifting Ceratops. He must have known that this deck is really, really bad against Blue Green Flash. So this is hilarious. I love this card in this deck, especially against a lot of the blue decks that are popping up so far. Uh, we have one Disdainful Stroke. Two negates to go against any counterspell style deck. Return to nature. Hits artifacts, enchantments, and cards in the yard. So anything with graveyard shenanigans, we can bring this in and kind of, you know, tackle something like that. Or just kill an artifact or enchantment. Two mystical disputes to go along with our negates against like a blue deck. Just uh, one mana. Mana league is super, super good. Thrashing Brontodon also goes with Return to Nature very well because it's just a 3-4 beater or you can sacrifice it to get an artifact or enchantment. And last we have Wicked Wolf. We don't have a lot of food generation, but we have two Gilded Goose that can produce food continuously. And we have two of the Golden Eggs, which counts as food that we can sack to Wicked Wolf. So this is probably more for like a mid-range battle where it's kind of a war of attrition and Wicked Wolf doesn't really die very easily. So that is the deck. Let's go and jump into some matches, see how this plays, and see if we can get some crazy, crazy wins. You know I'm going to be going for that mill plan at least once. So let's just jump into it. All right, welcome in to round number one with this Simic Adventure deck. Take a look at our opening hand. It doesn't look too promising. We have Edgewell Innkeeper, which is probably our best one drop, and Gilded Goose, our second best one drop, but we really have nothing else going on, and it looks like we're on the draw. So I'd hate to keep it, but I think I'm actually going to mulligan. This hand is way, way better. We can have Vantress Gargoyle on two, hopefully Great Henge on four. Uh, Disdainful Stroke isn't going to do much early, and Gadwick... Not the really best, but it is a keep six here. We're going to actually put Gadwick back because we don't have triple blue. And we'll just keep what we have because this can stop something big. Our opponent also has mold to five or six, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> All right, so they play a Pelt Collector. I can only assume that they are on a mono green stompy list or like a gruel stompy list. I could uh, definitely see a stomping grounds coming down here. That's going to pump up the Pelt Collector, hit us for two. Luckily... This Vantress Gargoyle is a great blocker. It's a 5-4 for two mana. Now, the Vantress Gargoyle is a pretty interesting card because uh, it can't attack unless an offending player has, you know, more than seven cards in their graveyard or seven or more cards. And then the Gargoyle can't block unless I have four or more cards. So, I think we have to block here, actually, to be honest. Uh, we need to... I can't believe they played that on three. Yikes. Okay, well unfortunate for us but also fortunate because we have another Vantress Gargoyle. Um, Great Henge is going to come down on four hopefully. Uh, Vivian is definitely definitely a problem. What in the world is this card? Spells you caught you the spell cost two less to cast if an opponent controls a green permanent as death touch. Whenever it deals Combat damage to a player draw a card. Interesting uh, use of a four drop I guess. <laughs> um, Target creature you control deals damage. Okay, so even though it's not fighting, it's dealing damage, and its damage has death touch. So that's super, super unfortunate. But I guess we'll just uh, we'll live with it here. Um, let's go ahead and draw a card. We'll hold up just Stainful Stroke. I'm not sure if it'll matter. But actually, no, we're going to play <laughs> We're gonna play Emery. <laughs> we're going to definitely play Emery. That way, we can play our Vantress Gargoyles from the bin, and hopefully, you know, Take care of some of their threats before Vivian gets out of control. Guess not. They have they have they have everything they would ever need to beat my deck. No. Turn three Vivian is really good. <laughs> I think we're not winning this game. Just saying. And they they're gonna draw from this. This card, I never thought I'd see it in a constructed deck, to be honest, because it's just like for the stats, it's a four drop 
two three i think it's not really that great um i actually should have held this so that i could castle vantress but hmm, i think we're just up a creek a little bit too far i think we're dead yeah let's just let's just go to our sideboard and see if we can find something to beat this deck um, did not expect the Vivian or the other card there, but they're definitely really, really good cards for sure. Uh, Wicked Wolf is probably something pretty good we we might want as a turn four play, possibly. Um, Negate's probably not worth it just for, you know, Vivian. Um, I like where we're at as far as, like, being on the play. Uh, Gadwick, I think, can come out as well. What do we do? I think we just bring in all of our... Uh, our Wicked Wolves, I think that's our plan currently, is just uh, get on the board and start beating down and hopefully don't get uh, Vivian on turn three. That was pretty wild. <laughs> Triple green is definitely, definitely tough to uh, to do, but the green-red deck can definitely do it because two colors is pretty pretty simple there. But we'll see if we can take this deck down. This is definitely one of the chal more challenging matchups for us because we really don't have a lot of interaction, a lot of uh, removal. So once they start building up their board, we can't really, uh, you know, we can't handle it very well. So we'll see if we can, uh, we can take this deck down. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. We'll see. Cause, uh, yeah, I think this is more built for like those mid rangey style decks. Well, well, I'm not sure. We'll see. So let's see. Well, we've got Merfolk into Vantress into Emery. So we probably just keep and then Great Henge on four if we can hit a land. Sounds pretty good. I think I'm actually going to mill them because this can start attacking earlier. So that's pretty cool. So we will mill out our opponent here for four. Nice. We have a Spellbreaker, a Domri, and a Collision Colossus. That's really good. Um, yeah, so we're going to just play Vantress Gargoyle here. That'll also reduce the cost on Emery by one, so it costs two mana instead of three. And I think we're gonna do Emery mill ourselves for four. Cool, we have another Vantress guy go out in the bin. We'll use this now to get another card in our graveyard. I'm not sure if that actually matters, but we definitely need another green source. <laughs> so end turn, then we can mill at the end of our turn to get them down to five cards in library. And then we'll be looking pretty good. And they scoop it up before they even play any cards. Oh my goodness. We just had the quick draw there. The quick draw. All right. So on the draw, I think we want to take out the goose. And we probably want to bring in the gates, to be honest. Just so that we um, have some play against those quick planeswalkers. Um, goose doesn't really do too much on the draw, to be honest. Um, it does facilitate our wolf, though. So we probably actually want to keep it in. Um, hmm, that's a tough one actually. We could take out two borrowers. I don't know how like realistic that is, but hmm, yeah. Now we're in a bit of a tough spot. We, we could take out a Jace, and we could take out one borrower. How about let's let's try it like that. Let's just trim a little bit off the the three drop slot there and see see what we got. So hopefully they don't have a crazy fast start, but hopefully we can also find the negate, which helps quite a bit. Uh, so we have the, kind of the same uh, plan here, except we have, uh, I'd say we have Lugstruck into Gargoyle, but Forest don't let castles come into play on tap. Definitely keep it. It's a really good hand. If we draw an island, it's even better, <laughs> but we'll see what we draw off the top here. So they're going to Fable Passage on one to get a Forest. Um, I still think... Yeah, we got to play this tap so we can have uh, our turn two Gargoyle. I think this is probably one of the best uh, draws for this deck is to go Gargoyle into Emery. So that's pretty sweet. We can go Gargoyle into Gargoyle. Uh, they played two Fable Passages to get both of their uh, land types. So that actually puts two in their yard, which helps our Vantress uh, Gargoyle pretty well here. So uh, let's go and play the 5-4 Flyer. They don't have any acceleration on their end, so I'm pretty pumped about that, actually. Well, now they do, but it was on turn three. So, the question is, do we play Emery, or do we hold up Negate? I think we hold up Negate because we can also hold up the Petty Theft. So, if they tap this without playing a land, we can, you know, bounce it back to their hand. 
Uh, I think that's actually the play. And we'll put a stop on their end step so we can mill them one with, with the Vantress Gargoyle as well. There's the land, and we'll see if they play like a Vivian or if they uh, play Brazen Borrow or something. All right, so they're playing Gruel Spellbreaker. You got it. Can't really do anything about that. It does have Hexproof. Unfortunately, <laughs> they both have Hexproof, so I can't do anything with our Petty Theft. That stinks. <laughs> um, yeah, got nothing I can do here. Land? Ooh, nice. That's pretty good. Love Struck Beast. Uh, we already have one, and we're just looking for a few more lands here to really uh, make these payoffs worth it. Oh, we milled a Questing Beast. That's fantastic. Um, I think what we'll do here... If that was an untapped land, I'd say we do Emery this turn, but I think we're actually just going to do Heart's Desire, make a 1-1, one -one, leave up our Negate and our Petty Theft, and I guess we'll just pass the turn. Put a stop on their end step. Always remember to put stops on any spot where you want the program to stop so you can respond or do something, because sometimes, sometimes it will, um, what will it do? It'll just skip your turn completely, super quickly. Um, so Cruel Harpooner is going to come in and just totally wreck our day, but that's okay. Well, I think it's going to get one, right? Yeah, it's going to get one. That stinks. All right, and we can't bounce our own stuff, actually. Yeah, we can't bounce our own stuff, unfortunately. So at least they trade. At least they trade. This has Trample, so we're just going to let that hit us for four. Which stinks, but, you know, nothing we can do there. It's got Hexproof on their turn, and they have Hexproof as well. All right, my turn. Land? Nice. Okay, sweet. So, let's play three, four, five. So, I think we play Lovestruck Beast. Five, five blockers, really nice. We can keep up Negate and Brazen Borrower. This is a great blocker for the four, four. Um, I like our chances here currently. We're playing a pretty interesting uh, game of magic here. A little uh, back and forth. So it looks like they might have a stomp here. They do have a stomp. Do we negate it? Does we negate? So let's see. Can this still block? It just can't attack. That's fine. If they want to do that to our 1-1, one -one, that's totally fine. This can still block, though. They, are, they did miss the land drop last turn. Yep. Good thing we held our negate. <laughs> Just saying. Good thing we held the negate. All right, so let's play Gargoyle. How many do they have? They have five in their yard. Let's play Emery, and then we also can hold up our Brazen Borrow, which is really sweet. Mill over the negate, which is a little uh, unfortunate, but, you know, it is what it is. Hopefully we don't get Vivian again. <laughs> Alright, Pell Collector's fine. Bone Crusher is good to go. That's going to build up the Pelt Collector here. We'll pass. Um, we'll actually bounce the Pelt Collector back to their hand. Take the counter off of it. Alright. Let's see what we got in our yard here. We got, a, we got a Vantress Gargoyle we can actually do. So that's pretty sweet. Um, let's scry first. Innkeeper. That's actually not too bad. Oh, I could probably... Eh, maybe I shouldn't have. That's alright. <laughs> we have enough mana we can play this from our exile. And, uh, yeah, I think we're just gonna hang out. We got great blockers here. Actually, we can't block because, you know why? Because we don't have four cards in our hand. <laughs> alright. Well... That's a little unfortunate, but maybe they don't realize that we can't block. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll test them. We'll test them. Ooh. I think we will let the four hit us, and we're going to block here, actually. If they try to Ember Clee, we can bounce their dude to their hand. Okay. We will put our full control on. And we'll petty theft that back to their hand. Resolves. Sorry. Not today. Goodbye. Goodbye, Bone Crusher Giant. 
Oh no, they get a they get a counter from that. No. Well, let's see. One, two, one, two. So two, four, six. So I could draw two cards. They have six cards in their yard. We can hit them for ten in the air. Hmm. Make them mill one card. But we also mill our edge keeper here. No, I think I think we'll wait. As tough as it is, I think we have to wait. Alright, so let's see what we got on top. Maybe it's something to bounce. Ooh, innkeeper. And yeah, we'll play our other one. Draw another card. Sounds good to me. Land to the bottom. Um what do we do here? These can only block flyers. We can't block with these anyway, so I think we just mill. And then we can go next and attack here. Yeah. Hit him for 10. Ooh, now we got 10 in the air flying. Oh, I think they win though. No, that's 8. Okay, Hellkite does not win the game here. Hellkite does not win. Hmm. Let's see. How can they block? They can block here and take 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 5, 8, 9, 10, 11. I think that's it. I don't think they can win. I'm just going to... Uh, anything else in my graveyard? No, I think we just push. What are they going to do? Even the Hellkite, that wasn't... That was not the play. I think the play was... No, I guess I guess that was the only play they could have made. We had him dead on board. Ho oh, ho, and I didn't even know it. Look at that. I thought this was going to be a tough match, and it was a very, very tough match. I was worried that they would get out ahead of us too quickly, and they stumbled a little bit early, but we were able to capitalize by basically just playing our 5-4 on turn 2 every game, so I guess that does it. So, game 1 in the books... Feels great. Deck's great. All right, welcome into round number two. Let's go and take a look at our hand, see what we have to work with, and it is a doozy. Double Merfolk Seeker Keeper, double Golden Egg, and a Jace. That really doesn't do much, but the Golden Eggs could draw us into like an Emery or a Vandress Gargoyle, and we can scry one, and we're on the play, I think. We're going to keep seven. We're not on the play. We're on the draw. Just kidding. Don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, so we'll scry here. Endkeeper looks great. Yes, that sounds awesome. So I don't even think I'm going to mill with this, actually. I'm just going to play the the Innkeeper and the Merfolk Seeker Keeper. Now, they're probably going to take Jace here. That's really the only scary card besides Emery, and all they see is, like, eggs and stuff. So I'm not sure they know what's going on. It looks like it is a Jess, or sorry, a Grixis control deck. Uh, I can only assume that it is Fires of Invention because they have Chandra in their deck, but... I could be wrong. Uh, usually the Grixis decks are usually the Grixis decks are Fires of Invention decks. Um, let's just see what we have to work with here. So this is sweet. We can do Innkeeper into Merfolk Seeker Keeper next turn and draw two cards, which is sweet. Narset Parter Reveals kind of gives it away, but again, they run this in control decks. But uh, I'm gonna stick stand firm to my belief that uh, this is a Fires of Invention deck. So we really need to get. Uh, get moving here. Or folks, here, keeper, draw two cards. Oh my gosh, I'm so stupid. I forgot Narset's out here. I'm so bad at this game. Why, heck, why? Why do I do this to myself? Why? <laughs> oh, I'm just the silliest goose you ever met. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Oh, I wish I wish I knew better. I wish I knew better, but I just I I can't just say I do because I don't. <laughs> no, I did it again. Shame concede. Shame concede. No, we're out of here. We're out of here. Okay, there are Grixis. Uh, there are Grixis fires I mentioned decks. So we probably want uh. Nature's Claim, we want Brontodon, and we want Disdainful Stroke. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? <laughs> I just can't get over that. That's so stupid. What am I doing? Okay. Whew. Okay. 
What do we got? What can come out? What can stay in? Goose, I know I'm on the play, but you got to go. Um, Great Henge can stay. Uh, Gadwick can go. We just want to get to our bread and butter here pretty quickly. Uh, do, 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 do. I like the Emery and Golden Egg combo. That might help us actually at some point. Back to Nature is good. Gargo is good. Beast is good. Let's cut down to Jace. And, uh, yep, let's uh, submit and see if we can get the win here and not get locked out by Narset again. Feels good to be so dumb. <laughs> oh, gosh. It, I did it to myself, and then I went and I did it to myself again. We're going to keep this because we have Edgewell Innkeeper into Merfolk Secret Keeper. Uh, we might actually go mill them. Actually, we can't do that. So... Let's just get an island so that those come into play untapped. I didn't really look at my hand to see like the lands because usually you don't see the uh, castle vantresses together like that. But, you know, it happens. Uh, so next turn we can go Edgewall into Merfolk Seeker Keeper. Draw some cards. Just kidding. We're going to do Vantress Gargoyle. <laughs> so next turn we can mill them. Then we can play in Innkeeper. Then we can cast this and draw a card. Feels good. Just kidding again. They played Thought Erasure. <laughs> oh boy. I better just stop talking because like I just cannot seem to uh this the stuff that I talk about never comes true. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Alright, we'll play that, and we'll play Love Shrug Beast, and we'll play a land. Next. So I've come to the conclusion that Vantures Gargoyle like never blocks unless you play really conservatively or just draw a bunch of cards. So uh, the Gargoyle is, ha, guess what? I don't have anything for you to take. <laughs> they have five cards in their library already? Woohoo, baby. All right, I guess we'll do this. Millinar set, yes. Sweet. Oh, they have seven? Oh, how lucky of us. To just, uh, you know, have a great henge that we drew off the top like a champ. Um, <laughs> we're going to swing for six because uh, this deck is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> End the turn, I guess. We'll stop on their end step so we can gain some life. Draw from dreams. We'll just gain some life. It's always good to gain life if, even if you have nothing else that you can do with this. Oh, that love struck beast is going to be big. It's going to be big. <laughs> and you draw a card? Holy moly. That's pretty good. I'd say that's pretty good. All right. Well, I guess we're going to do Love Struck Beast. Well, would you look at that? Love Struck Beast is in the, in the house. Does this just get a counter for coming in? Holy moly. There is no way that this card is legal. <laughs> there is no way. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The beats. Now I see, get this go, get this great henge down, and oh my goodness, this game gets out of control. What are you even, what are you even thinking about playing Nicol Bolas? Noxious Grasp. Okay, I can deal with that. I can also deal with that because I'm pretty sure you're dead because this is not a, uh, what are they called? <laughs> defender. This is not a defender. <laughs> great henge, you are my new hero. Oh, it feels so good. Feels good to be the best. You know, after game one, I I, I feel like we deserve that one. <laughs> uh, do we bring in Mr. Wilspeed on the draw? I think we do. That's something I think we do. I think we bring in Mr. Wilspeed on the draw. That feels like a win. I feel like they just jam everything and they don't like care about what's going on. So maybe we just... Uh, Maybe we just bring in the negates too. I mean, what's stopping us really? One, two. Why not? Let's go for it. They're just gonna jam all their cards anyway, and if we have the if we have the counter spells for them, then I guess they can't play them. Or they can try. <laughs> Little risky of a of a sideboard option there. But we have innkeeper and gargoyle, so I love I love this draw from this deck. Keep seven. Um, now the turn two thought erasure is going to be a huge problem because I really want my Vantress Gargoyle to live, but we also get a, you know, thrashing bronze now, which is cool. 
Shimmer. Oh, yes. That's awesome. You know why it's awesome? Because we get Vantress Gargoyle to live. <laughs> and that's all I want in my life is to have this card resolved because it's super, super funny and it beats people down. So I guess they don't have the Thought Erasure. I could assume that they only have Narset Parter Avails, a card that really beats us up pretty good. There's another Narset. Nice. Well, um, do we play our Round Fires of Invention or just, you know, go in, go ham? Probably just go ham, right? That's like, that's like the thing you do. Yeah, let's just do it. And I'm going to hit the Narset so if they want to use it, they've got to kill it. Obviously, they have a second one, but, you know, what are you going to do? You just let it sit there? I don't think so. We're going to get that off the table. Because they're going to use it next turn, and then they're going to play another one. One card in the yard. we got to mill them. And hopefully they don't have a red land into fires. Oh, they have Kefnet. What? What? Kefnet? I thought you were a Fires of Invention deck. Well, I feel stupid. <laughs> what in the world is going on right now? <laughs> All right. Well, put that land to the bottom. Hopefully we draw a great hinge and just feel good about ourselves. No attacks. Put a stop on your end step. Make sure to put the stops on their end steps, on your upkeeps, on their upkeeps, whatever you have to do. Make sure you don't miss those triggers because Arena likes to skip past your stuff pretty quick. <laughs> What, what is this card? Destroy target land, scry two. Well, let's see. Do I care? <sighs> Do I need all these lands? I'm just gonna play a land next turn. Yeah, I really don't care. You can you can kill my land. It really doesn't press or It's kind of like the like drawn from dreams or the draw cards. Um, you really don't want to counter those because you want to counter their threats. This isn't really a threat. I'm not sure what. Uh, time frame they're living in because uh, Field of the Dead was banned a while back. So I'm not sure why this is still in the deck, but you know, I digress. God, Eternal Kefnet. Not swinging. What do we got off the top? Ooh, I kind of wanted that. That's okay. Ooh, an egg. Well, let's see what the egg's got to do. Golden Egg does not draw this card because we're stupid. Gosh, I hate that I keep doing this. Oh my goodness, I'm so tilted. <laughs> All right, so I guess we'll just wait. Uh, we'll put a stop on their end step again because we can never draw cards because Narset is just the most unfun card. Why would you put that text on a Planeswalker? I'll never know. But, you know, they did it and they did it to the fairy. Whew, okay, so hopefully, fingers crossed for the next couple years that it's not not this bad <laughs> we'll see what we got here they could have swung we only have two cards in our in our hand oh that's so good Ooh, that's real good okay sweet well, that's a real good one um man i wish i could have killed the could have killed that narset but at least we know they just have narset and they refuse to use it absolutely refuse to use it We'll see. Fae of Wishes, huh? Can't do nothing about that one. Duress. Well, you can't duress my Brazen Borrower. That resolves. Can't duress this. <laughs> Fae of Wishes. Well, um... Hmm... I feel like I just bounced their stuff. Bounce this guy. Yep, that resolves. No lands left to play. Mill. Emery. That would have been nice. Uh, my turn. Ooh, that's not going to be too good since they have a million lands. <laughs> so they have Kefnet, Narset, stuff like that. Ooh, that might. Uh, that's not technically going to work. Because of the amount of uh, stuffs going on, but uh, let's go at Narset here. I don't care. They're gonna let it die. I assume they would let it die. I guess I could just block here and let that take five. So cool. And I guess we just wait 
and hope that they play something like play Nars at first. Oh man, that's rough. I really wanted to. Why would they? That's so unfair that they drew that card. Not a big, not a big fan. Well, I might as well just use it. Might as well use it so they don't get the scry or the the surveil. <laughs> Man, what a card to draw at that exact exact moment. Man, that's brutal. That is brutal. Ooh, they don't they decide not to play God Eternal Kefnet. Sure thing. Ooh, is that is that drawing cards from our brazen borrower? Oh, very nice, very nice. Before Narset hit, hits the Yeah, yeah. That was totally planned. It wasn't accidental. What do you find? Oh, Nicol Bolas. Sweet. <laughs> well, what's our what's our good draws? That's a good draw. I guess they w would want to do that too, right? Well, we can do, let's see, three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six. Oh, nice. So we can do this. And we can start off by bouncing this back to their hand. All right, and then we can do next, we can go three here. And then nine to your nine to the dome. Boom. And we got three in the air coming back again. All right. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. What you got for me? Don't play ritual soot. <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> uh, I feel like just because I said it, that they have it now. Um, sure. Let's see what let's see what modes they choose for this. Are they gonna minus? I guess we'll just try to draw two cards here. Ooh, Merfolk Secret Keeper, nice. I think they're still dead on board here. Block. Block here. They take three, six, seven, eight. Yeah. You are deader than a doornail here. I think we pulled off the impossible once again. How do we keep doing this with this deck? We just have these wonky, weird, bad draws and we just somehow beat these good decks what is happening right now <laughs> just like value town right here <laughs> all right win number two in the books let's move on to match number three all right all right welcome back to round number three coming off a pretty silly awesome win against grixis fires well grixis control sorry i said it was grixis fires the whole time and it wasn't Anyway, back to this game. Uh, hand looks pretty sweet. We got like Love Struck or Heart's Desire on one, possibly Emery on two or three, probably three. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna keep. We're on the draw, so we do. We could draw something like an Innkeeper or a Goose or something to make this cheaper. We'll see. We'll see what our opponent does here. Um, kind of a little bit of a wonky hand, but we do. We can make a one-one on turn one. <laughs> Okay, so they're milled to six, so they went down one card on us. Let's see what they have for turn one. They have a Rugged Highlands. Interesting. Um, let's go ahead and pay two, and we'll play Heart's Desire. Put our 1-1 one, one in there, because the beauty and the beast, it's so adorable. I love it. So they're Jund. What is this card? Wayfinder. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or land from among them. Put it on top of your library, put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So you drop 2 1 that lets you put a land from the four that you look at back on top. Um I'm not sure how I feel about that one, but I can see where it'd be it might be okay. Um we will play this tapped. We're gonna play all of our island cards first so that Gadwick can actually be played on like turn four or five, maybe another wayfinder here okay very interesting to see this card I've, since it was released i've never actually seen it played because putting the land on top of your library isn't really um that great since you should be able to put it into your hand with other cards i think so uh 
Hmm. Well, I feel like I just block here. I know I can't attack with a love struck beast, but just like taking some of their threats off the table seems fine. I'm just still unsure of what they're doing currently. Uh, we're just going to play this as a blocker. It blocks. It just don't attack. Not too worried about it attacking currently. Um, I think next turn we're going to play Emery and then we'll play Gadwick. So we can do Gadwick for two. Uh, we'll just see what kind of cards our opponent is playing. Maybe this is kind of a strange like uh, color correcting style card for maybe a less optimal like mana base possibly. Not really sure. But we'll see what Emery hits here. Hopefully some uh, Vantra's Gargoyles that we can bring back. That would be super sweet. Super pumped, actually, not to be playing against blue, so I can actually just jam my spells and it feels great. Um, I'm sure I've my opponents have felt the same way when I play all my blue spells and my blue decks. Because <laughs> I love countering spells, but man, I hate playing against it. <laughs> Alright, let's see what our opponent has here. Shock. Alright, so Emery is biting the dust at least Gadwick's looking pretty good jungle hollow all right so they did, I guess they don't have a very optimized mana base possibly so I'm not really sure what's going on <laughs> so let's just mill them out actually and see what they're working with I think this is a great way to see what's going on in their deck bark high troll so it looks like it's green and red based and then probably has black in there for some sort of removal spells possibly not really sure. I put a land at the bottom. Don't need another land. We have a ton of those. Oh, we drew a Vantress Gargoyle. That's sweet. Put them to six, possibly to seven if we can get this guy off the table. What in the world? I haven't seen this card in a minute since this set released. Red, red, green, green, Sunder Shaman. It's a five, five. Can't be blocked by more than one creature, so it has to be blocked by a single creature every time. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, destroy target artifact or enchantment that player controls. And this, well, friends, this is an artifact. <laughs> At least these trade. That's kind of sweet. Um, this play is actually going to be pretty sweet since we're going to do Vantress Gargoyle. We will mill our opponents for two. What else they got in there? Just Evolving Wilds. And then we will play a land and then play Great Henge. And then we'll use the Great Henge to play Heart's Desire. <laughs> Sweet. One more one more card in their graveyard, and it is attacking time for our buddy. Gadwick's looking extra, extra spicy currently, because it can go for, what, three, four, five currently? Whew, that's a lot of mana. That's a lot of cards. Uh, we're not going to attack because we want to block the Shaman here, because we don't want them to connect with this so that they don't kill the Great Henge. Looks like they have all their colors, Evolving Wilds, Bale Passage just a little bit better, but it also costs a rare wild card, which a lot of people have bo been bottlenecked on these, and I have as well. So, you know, Fable Passage is a better Evolving Wilds, but it also costs a rare wild card slot where you can use that, uh, you know, somewhere else. So let's just go ahead and block this guy. It's a good trade for us, I think, just to get that guy off the table and hopefully... They don't have another one so that you know our great henge can stick around for a little bit but i think we're gonna go three four five six i think we'll do this for a six which is wild <laughs> actually crazy love the great henge and it's gonna come in as a four four and draw a card oh my goodness we're gonna draw seven cards next turn oh my goodness i'm just gonna tear up a little bit i think i'm gonna cry <laughs> what do you got opponent Black and green is what it's tapped for. And find is going to bring back the old Sunder Shaman and the uh, the Wayfinder here. So they have green, green, red, red. Here comes the Sunder Shaman once again. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So let's go ahead and put this back. All right, I mill them for two actually. Which them having find is actually pretty funny that we're milling them. <laughs> so we'll mill them for two. Looks like they have uh, Thrash. That's pretty wild. That card's nuts. Um, so yeah, we'll do... What do we have? Four, five, six. We'll do this for six. Five, six. Pay. Auto pay. Get to gain some life. Do this for six. Draw six cards. This enters with a one one counter, and we get the draw card off that, so that's even, that's even sweeter. 
Uh, this doesn't have trample or anything, right? So we just block with this human. That feels great. Yeah, so we're just gonna we're just gonna attack here. What is the minus eight on this? Draw seven cards. Then if your library has no cards in it, you may win the game. Say so you may? No, you win the game. <laughs> okay. Well, goose is gone, land is gone, and other land is probably gone. Yep. Ditch all that stuff. We don't really care about it. Um, next turn, we're gonna just bounce all their stuff, tap it all down with Gadwick. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty good time. Not gonna lie. So this is gonna actually be a three-two. Ooh. Oh, they're gonna give it haste. Gotcha. I'm going to bring the beats so I can block uh, here and here, and then this takes two. I could double block, but I really don't want to. <laughs> no cards in hand from our opponent, so we'll block here, block here. That'll take two down to five, and I think we're going to bring the beats here with Ventures Cargo turning into a six. Yeah, we'll tap that. That's what you get, Rhythm of the Wild. Get out of my face. Get out of my face, Rhythm of the Wild. <laughs> Emery, whoo, whoo, whoo. that's pretty good. Uh, resolve. Is there anything in here that we want to get back? No. So we don't really care about playing Emery currently. Uh, lands. We can play a bunch of these uh, brazen borrowers. And I guess we'll swing for nine. Yikes! Now when they move to combat, it's going to pass priority back to us. Uh, when that does happen, we'll have to. Um, we're going to cast brazen borrower to bounce something to their hand so we can tap their creatures down and then we'll do it again so we have three four five so we can uh, cast petty theft and cast the brazen borrower so we can tap two things down bounce one thing and we can swing in for the win next turn <laughs> i mean regardless of us tapping or bouncing anything i don't think they have anything that can stop flyers and we currently have uh, some giganto flyers here go swinging for 11 in the air currently holy moly well i like jace with these ventures car goes that feels real good that feels real good unfortunately our opponent uh looks like they're playing with one of the the pre-built decks for gruel and they might have just added the black in there um we'll move on to the sideboard we're probably just bringing anything we can to kind of battle with their creatures probably um we don't really need Disdainful Stroke too much. I don't think there's anything that's uh, that we need to do that. I think we just bring in some Wicked Wolves, maybe. Just like two Wicked Wolves. Yeah, because Gadwick is actually pretty good against creature decks because you can tap down their team uh, by playing all the blue spells. So I think that's a that's a pretty okay. Unfortunately, the power level between our decks is a little uh, little off, I'd say. A um, little unfortunate on that regards. But, you know, that... Is you got everybody's got to start somewhere. When I started playing Arena, you know, I didn't have uh, a lot of money and I didn't have a lot of cards in my collection. I also started way, way back when they gave you like 10 starter decks and just like a ton of packs and stuff. But then when the reset happened, well, you know, we got all of our stuff back, but I had to start from a very little collection and work my way up. Um, used a lot, a lot of gold to buy packs, a lot of gold. Um, I was constantly buying packs. Um, every time I got a thousand gold, I'd immediately spend it. Now I'm trying to save it a little bit just so I can draft, uh, maybe have some friends over, do some drafts. I think that would be cool because I really, I never draft. I think it's super fun, but I just, I just never do it. So anyway, back to the game. Um, we have Innkeeper into Merfolk Seeker Keeper, hopefully finding a Vantress Gargoyle so we can play Great Henge on four. That would be sweet. Uh, we are on the draw, so I think we're actually going to keep this. We can, uh, mill them on one and then do both of these on two. Well, now we can. I, I didn't. Again, I didn't look at my lands, and I thought we could do all this crazy stuff. But we now we can because we're um, we're lucky, and we always had it. <laughs> we always had the the island. Mill four. Good. We got the rid of that voracious hydra. Nice. Okay. What do we got here, opponent? It's pretty cool because the uh, the ramp that's needed in a lot of these decks is uncommon, and those uh, are pretty easy to come by, which is sweet. So let's go ahead and innkeeper, and we'll play the Merfolk Secret Keeper from Exile, and we'll draw a card. Jace looks pretty good here. Uh, Great Henge still costs a zillion mana because we only have a 1-1 one -one currently, and uh, a goose and all this other silly stuff. But I think we'll get to the Henge, and when we get to the Henge, it's going to be uh, 
it's gonna be pretty sweet we really need a brazen borrower currently though like really bad we really need a brazen borrower <laughs> that uh that card's gonna eat us alive here um i'm just gonna play the the goose and just hopefully we can either block with it or do something with it i don't know i'm sure because this card is gonna beat us down let me tell you they're gonna play like a sunder shaman here and just give it it's gonna turn into like a six six or five five with haste or something double rhythm of the wild yikes maybe i should have brought in some uh some artifact or enchantment removal or something oh man well it's not looking good for us here folks not looking good at all <laughs> let's go and draw a card or sorry scry and take a look at the top card of our library seeker keeper huh well 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 do we want merfolk seeker keeper i think we're just looking for hmm, they have four cards in their library or in their graveyard maybe I don't even know. I'm gonna put it to the bottom. We're looking like for Vantra's Gargoyle, some sort of big threat that we can like, you know, win the game with. <laughs> uh, they don't. Ha they have a bunch of red. They only have one black and one green. I'm actually gonna swing with this and see if they want to make the trade. We'll see if they want to make that trade. They do not want to make that trade. Very interesting. Usually, if someone offers up an edgewell innkeeper it's either something's up or they just want to see if they can get rid of your paradise druid <laughs> we'll see what they play here because they got double rhythm and a bunch of lands pretty scary but we do have brazen borrower thankfully evolving wilds probably going to go get a forest yep there it is and three cards in hand i wonder if they don't have, if they don't have any payoff or anything yikes um Yeah, I think we just uh, I think we just play it, honestly. Draw a card. Draw a card. And well, innkeeper. Oh, nice island. Island is good. Island is very good. Looking for the gargoyles here. Um, I think we just play Jace, honestly, and then we plus on them try to mill over they didn't play any threats last turn so hopefully the top of their deck is full of threats and we can just uh mill right over them fingers crossed we'll see what they mill over here whoa aggressive mammoth oh my goodness do they have enough mana for it One, two three four five six. Oh, they did have enough mana for it i am so glad that we got rid of that Double, double rhythm of the wild. That would have been a nine-nine trample haste. Oh my god! <laughs> no, I didn't mean to swing with everything. <laughs> I was so distracted by this monstrosity of a creature. It's an elephant. It's an elephant. You know. Um. <clears throat> Whew! That's a that's a spicy meatball right there. Ooh, gosh, they're gonna play something. I don't have any blockers. Oh man, we gotta play Gadwick next turn. Ooh boy. Um I'm super nervous right now because I don't know what's in their deck, and it looks terrifying. Just filled with gigantic creatures, and they have double rhythm of the wild. Oh my gosh. What if they have Ravenger Worm? Oh please don't have Ravenger Worm. Casualties of War. What? What did they just... They took out my Edgewell Innkeeper, my Jace, my Token, and a Blue Source? Oh, no! How could you? That's just rude. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, well, that's a thing. Well, I guess we'll do this for two. Man. I've never been so disrespected in my whole life. <laughs> that was so unexpected. Holy cow. Oh no. Oh no. That is an 8-8 flying haste. 
Oh no. <laughs> oh my goodness. What? <laughs> what? Don't kill Gadwick. Three? Can I read this again? Deals four damage to any target and three damage to each of up to two other targets. Are you serious right now? What? What? Um. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> what? What is going on? I just got destroyed by this Dracuseth. I can't swing. Wait, can I swing? No, I can't. It's a zero four. What are you talking about? You're crazy. Oh boy. That is insanity. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Guess what I didn't expect to happen in this game? That thing. Whoa. Wow. I'm sorry I'm saying wow so much, but my goodness, did I not see that coming? They're going to put two counters on it. Oh my lord. We are not prepared for this kind of anarchy. Oh my god. I think we're dead. Well, we can go to 14, and I, can bl and I can't block. <laughs> That's not going to do it. Um, I really don't know what will uh, no attacks? Are we dead? 9, 4, 3 this. 9 and 4 is 13. Eh, we're, we're almost there. I mean, we're pretty much on the way out into the coffin, into the ground, because this thing is about to lay the freaking smack down. <laughs> that thing's about to give me the people's elbow. Look at him. Look at him. He's taking off his, his, his elbow pad right now. <laughs> Whoa, what? Hold on. Why would you do it to that? I'm confused. Sure. Why would you just kill my flyer? I mean, they guess this kills the flyer, or they just had something else to kill the flyer? Oh, no, that doesn't have... Ooh. That does not have... Uh, what is it called? Defender. <clears throat> I believe we have been killed. I will let them do it. I will gain two life. We are at ten. <laughs> We're dead. All right, game three. Whoa, oh boy. We're bringing in the uh, enchantment removal ASAP. Also, how do we beat a Dracoseth or the Mammoth? I guess we just have to beat him down quickly. Maybe we just bring in all of our disdain for strike. I didn't know they had that many crazy cards. Oh my god. Alright, Gadwick. Uh, actually, Gadwick ain't too bad because it just blocks everything. Oh boy. Well, I don't know if Jace is, is really the man for the job currently. Um, Brazen Borrower doesn't seem great. Disable Stroke seems unbelievably great. Gilda Goose, sorry buddy. You you gotta you gotta bite the dust here. Um, I think we want both Brontodons. And I think, do we want this? Probably. Two mana instant that takes out a, a nature card. I think we'll keep it like this. We trim down on two brazen borrowers to fit some more three drops. We don't want the curve to go too crazy. Brought in some wicked wolves. Although wicked wolf without goose is kind of silly. I guess we just... Uh, hmm. Actually, mystical suit doesn't seem too bad, honestly, because... They kind of tap out for everything, so maybe this will win. We'll see. We'll see. It hits any spell. It doesn't hit just like non-creature or just creatures. So, whoo, boy. Um, <laughs> just can't believe that we just got destroyed by Dracoseth. Whoa. Sometimes you see the craziest stuff on ladder. <laughs> wow, did that catch me off guard. I cannot even handle myself right now. <laughs> All right, so. Hand looks great. Four lands, three spells. We got one, two, and then Great Henge on four as long as Vantress Gargoyle sticks around. These are the draws that usually pan out for us. So, fingers crossed. I think we can do this. We have the power. Let's see what our opponent does. They are going to mull to six. We are going to play Heart's Desire right off the bat. Make a 1-1. One, one. 
we can go two. Oh, we can go one, two, three, four. We have a sweet curve right now. I'm not going to lie to you. Not going to lie to you. Swing for one. Easy. I think we just play large shot beats. Just get the beats going. Just get the pressure on quickly and as fast as possible so that we don't get killed by, I don't even know. Lava coil, get out of here. You're dead. Play Love Struck Beast. This will still allow us to do this on, uh, what is it called? Next turn. If we can get this down next turn, I think we are in the clear. This cannot be Lava Coiled. Don't kill this. Rhythm of Wild? Sure. Uh, this plus Great Henge. And we will gain some life. And we'll swing for six. All right. Well, this can turn into a four, th four, two. All right. Seder Wayfinder. Oh, no. This is Selhana Wayfinder. That's a three, two. Can we overcome? I think we can. Great Henge is going to really give us some serious, serious uh, muscle here. As long as we draw something. Whoa. Man, that's awesome. Because when this thing comes into play, watch. The one one's going to come in as a 2-2. Just kidding, because non-token. <laughs> Read your cards, Ronald. Read your cards. All right, so this is going to come in. Nice. Oh, my goodness. Let's go. We're going off. We're going off. Let's go. <laughs> the combo. It's not really combo, but the combo. <laughs> All right, hit you to eight. Um, this can't attack yet, but it's also it also can't block. So be scared of this gargoyle. <laughs> they have five lands currently. This thing got him on land. That's pretty good. But I don't even know if anything can stop me right now. I'm on a roll. That doesn't even come close. I think five, six, seven. Urgh, so close. Oh, nice. This taps gains us life and we get to play golden egg. I feel you. I feel you. All right. Well, I guess we just uh, save the brazen borrower here. We'll just swing with the 5-5. Five, five. Just swing with the 5-5 five, five currently. We're probably going to mill them and then that'll be 4, 5, 6, 7. Nice. Very nice. So we'll mill them. Very good. Well, I guess I just got all the little guys. Uh, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we want this for both sides. And then we can mill them for one. So end the turn. This can bounce anything that they play and they tap out for. We'll see. They have double green, triple red, and a black source. That's not enough to cast Dracoseth, and they concede the game and we win the match. Nice. And we go up to platinum tier two. When did that happen? I wasn't even paying attention. And that's awesome. Sweet. All right. So we ranked up. We won the match. Um, deck is weird. It's strange, but man, it really is powerful. It really puts the pressure on quickly. Like, I know I said it lacks interaction, but man, people cannot handle the gargoyle. I'll tell you what, this deck really, if you have the right draw, it really get, draws a lot of cards. It puts the pressure on. I am super, super impressed. I don't know how we were winning these games because some of the draws felt really awkward, but man, is this deck powerful. All right, so after a couple crazy matches some weird ups and downs and lefts and rights um we come to this deck just i don't even know honestly like this deck just it was so powerful that i didn't even realize what was happening until we were just beating down for like 10 or 11 in the air absolutely crazy um i've kind of underestimated the gargoyle since they were released um, i know it's a 5-4 for two mana and the stipulation is a bit high, but man, if you really lean on it a little bit, especially with like Jace and maybe the Merfolk Seeker Keeper, and then you also use the Merfolk Seeker Keeper to draw cards off of Edgewell Innkeeper, so it's not just a 0-4 that does absolutely nothing. It's honestly pretty solid. And going like Gargoyle into Great Henge, this card is nutty. 
I will tell you what, I've never played with it until right now, and this card is fantastic, and I love it. I love it. And I also love Brazen Borrower, and this deck just does everything I want to do. It draws cards, plays evasive threats, you know, mills them out a little bit. Uh, I was really hoping to go for the mill plan, but man, I just like, you bring the beats with this deck that you can't even, like, sit around and wait and, like, try to mill them out, because Lovestruck Beast is a 5-5. This is a 5-4 flyer. Absolutely awesome. Super highly recommend. I know that sentence was a little weird, but I highly recommend this deck because it is fantastic. Andre Strotsky, oh my goodness, you are a crazy mad scientist. How do you even come up with these decks? I don't understand, but keep doing what you're doing because I love this deck. I want to know the next one. What's the next big thing? I'm just going to wait. I'm going to watch your Twitter. I'm going to wait and see because uh, the next one is probably going to be as good or better. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoyed watching me struggle to play this deck or, you know, not really know what I'm doing, fumbling around and then end up getting the win out of nowhere. Uh, the creatures are big, they're bad, and they hit really, really hard. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the deck and go ahead and let me know what your favorite deck is currently or if you want me to play a deck, go ahead and leave that down in the description. I love getting deck ideas, love trying anything new, anything crazy, so by all means, go wild. Hit that like button if you liked the video. Make sure you to subscribe to the channel. Hit me up on Twitter to talk about anything Magic related. If you want to watch shorter games of Magic, go ahead and watch uh, on Instagram or IGTV. You can go and follow me there. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And remember, Magic is great and so are you. Stay positive and play Island. <laughs>